previously on Lost. Yes, inside that hatch is a large electromagnet and uh, the electromagnet is like a large iron core with wire coiled around it and uh, the electric current flows through uh, the wire causing the magnetic domains which act like little magnets to all align creating a, a large magnetic field and uh, the stronger the current the stronger the magnetic field and it's strong enough to have made our plane crash. So there's a really strong current running through the electromagnet. Where did that come from? I have no clue. Pushing the button um, dissipates the magnetic field somehow. So if we can't do that, um, the magnetic field might be uncontrollable. Uh, if we don't get off the island in time, it, it could explode and the repercussions will be severe. Huh? We die. So how do we get off the island? You guys. What about the sub? We can't get to it in time. What about a boat? You guys. Where are we going to get a boat? You guys. Other... What about the plane? The plane? The engine's still working. It just won't start. Maybe if we could jumpstart the engine, it might well, actually work. do we work. have an engine? We don't have an engine or a motor to jumpstart the plane from. We might be able to create one, though. What? Follow me. We can create a motor out of these? We can't even walk past them. These pylons are basically large magnets. Hey, I remember learning about magnets in Mr. Sokolowski's class. generates a magnetic field. Magnetic fields are vector quantities um, that exist in a region of space uh, where a magnetic field occurs, force occurs. These fields are, are visualized um, as imaginary lines in the space of the mag magnetic force and show the strength of the magnetic field. Okay, so about these pylons. Well, the strength of uh, a magnet represented by M in the formula um, for magnetic moment is through the direction of the line going from south to north. Um, uh, south to north. Um, in terms of interactions of field, like poles repel and unlike poles attract. So these forces between pylons? Yeah, the magnetic force um, can be calculated using Coulomb's law and Newton's law of universal gravitation, which states that every massive particle in the universe attracts every other massive a particle with a force which is directly proportional um, to the product of uh, their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. 
the equation is um, force equals k of magnetic constant times the charge on one magnet times the charge on the other magnet divided by the distance squared. So how does this help us get the plane started? Well, in this case, the south ends of the magnets uh, at the top um, are all above ground and north below ground. So um, there's a lot of conflicting force between uh, each uh, magnet. Walking into the magnetic field in this circular area right here, um, it c could cause a brain to combust spontaneously. Oh, crap. Okay, how does that help us get the plane started? Well, okay, these pylons are, are magnets created by an electric current. This current creates a magnetic field. Using the right hand rule, we can determine the direction we can determine the direction of the magnetic field. When the hand is wrapped uh, around the solenoid, the coil, the thumb, is pointing in the direction of the magnetic north. Hmm. Yeah, okay. so um, now we can solve for the force on the current carrying wire in a magnetic field using the equation force equals current times length of the wire times the strength of the magnetic field. <laughs> We can use the current uh, to build a huge DC motor to power the plane. A DC motor um, converts power into mechanical energy work by forcing current through a coil and producing a magnetic field that spins the motor. It has six parts, an axle, a, a stator, a commutator, one or more field magnets and brushes. The commutator reverses the current direction between the rotor and the external circuit and applies power to the location of the rotor the best location of the rotor, because um, with the reversal of the direction of the current in the moving coil of the motor, torque is produced, and uh, that causes the motor to turn. So, are you saying that... Um... Yeah, I should also mention transformers. Transformers consist of two sets of coils, each set containing an inductor. AC voltage uh, goes through one of the windings, the primary winding, while the other winding, the secondary winding, is isolated from the primary winding. Why does that happen? Well, alternating current that flows through the primary winding creates a time-varying magnetic flux. This links to the secondary winding and creates a voltage across it. The voltage is proportional to the ratio of the number of turns on the primary winding to the number of turns on the secondary winding, called the turns ratio. And this helps because... Well, anyway, these pylons provide the current. We can create a modified DC motor, hook it up to the plane, and that should be enough to jumpstart the engine. Cool. This actually might work. Okay, but how do we build it without walking past the pylons? We turn them off. Yeah, if only right. we knew how to turn them off. Well, we do know. What? What? These pylons are operated by a generator uh, located 1.3 miles southwest of here. Um, turn off the generator and uh, the pylons will turn off. No. Okay. Why didn't you tell us this? It doesn't matter. How do we turn off the generator? Well, a generator converts um, mechanical energy into electrical energy under the principle of electromagnetic induction discovered by Michael Faraday and Joseph Henry. This principle states that when an electric conductor is moved through a magnetic field, electric current flows through the conductor. The mechanical energy of the moving wire converts into electrical energy. It's similar to a DC motor, but motors convert electrical energy to mechanical energy, and generators convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. Hit the off button. Right, Shirley, let's go.